Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Burning Dog Face. And I'd like to welcome you to Let's Play The Operative. No one lives forever. But uh, since no one ever refers to this game as The Operative, I'm just going to be using the subtitle from now on. And yes, I know this looks terrible, but uh, trust me, it's just the menu. This is a side effect of the mod that is used to make this game run on modern resolutions. See, this game came out in 2000. And it's uh, a comedic first-person shooter set in the 1960s as a parody of James Bond. I always used to hear about how amazing this game was back in the day. And while I'm pretty sure it won't quite be up to modern standards, I'm still pretty delighted by the opportunity to get to experience it. So, before we jump in, I'd like to say that this is going to be a blind LP. I'm going to play the game for the first time ever, and you guys get to come along for the ride. I did check out the opening cutscene and the very first area in order to get a reading on the audio levels. The, uh, the frame rate wasn't so much a problem in a 19-year-old game. But other than that, everything we're about to see is going to be new to me. So, without further ado, let's play No One Lives Forever. Easy, you will take less damage when hit, and the AI will be far less accurate. Normal, you will take slightly more damage when hit, and the AI are more accurate. Hard, the, uh, the AI will have average accuracy, and you will take damage easily. Super Spy, the AI will be very accurate, and you will take a lot more damage. Let's go with normal. The Assignment, an unknown assassin is killing off Unity's elite operatives. In spite of the danger, Kate Archer and Bruno Lawry still have a job to do. Could this be Kate's first shot at a mission fraught with peril and intrigue? Or is it just another routine assignment? A crisis has arisen. Unity's undercover operatives are being killed off by an unknown assailant. It seems likely that there's a traitor within the agency. Report to the war room for a full briefing on the situation and a tactical overview of your upcoming mission. Do not be late. Following the briefing, stop by the training facility to hone your skills. Roger that. Report to the briefing room. Report to Santa's workshop for gadget training. I didn't even notice that the first time. Maybe if you stop dressing your guys like spies, they would stop being killed off.
Of course. I like that. Damn. Hello. Bruno, how's France? Did you collect any new bullet holes? I know how you love to be shot at. I'm teasing. I'm glad you're not damaged. Did you at least encounter an exotic temptress or two? Really? What was her name? What do you mean you don't remember? That's horrible. Of course, I'm famished. Are you buying? Then it's a date. Let's say Maximilian's in half an hour. Ciao. I'm not very happy, you know. It's not like I thought it would be. I never promised it would be as exhilarating as your former trade, only that it would keep you out of jail and make it easier to sleep at night. More wine. You're the first female operative Unity has ever employed. The committee is old-fashioned. They need time to get used to the idea of a woman in this line of work. I know all that, but at this rate I'll be a bloody grandmother before they give me a real assignment. You can always go back to burglary and pickpocketing if you can't live without excitement. Damn it, that's not what I'm saying. I just want to be challenged. I'm sick of wiretaps. I'm sick of eavesdropping on boring strangers who may or may not pose some trivial threat to international security because they forgot to declare a ham sandwich at Heathrow. I don't have the patience for it. It's not what I'm good at. It's never fun paying one's dues, but we all have to endure a bit of frustration and tedium now and then. Builds character. I think I've paid my bloody dues. Is that what you think? God knows I loathe sermons, but I'll tell you right now that you'll never stop paying your dues. Not ever. I'm sorry you're not happy, but you might as well get used to it. Nobody owes you a damn thing. You make it sound like I'm some spoiled child. I'm not asking to be coddled. I just want a chance to prove myself. You're right. I know it's been hard for you, but I'm confident you'll get your chance. All the petty politics in the world won't hold you back. They've done an outstanding job so far, haven't they? You see? What did I tell you? Probably just one of the committee members needing a babysitter on short notice. Ye of little faith, I'll see you there. Why don't we go together? I have an errand to attend to first. You go on ahead. I'm going to level with you. Even some of that was new to me. <laughs> I skipped the cutscene after the third agent died. Sorry about that, I forgot to turn mouse sensitivity up. Like a big cretin. Good afternoon, Miss Archer. They're expecting you in the briefing room. Can I steal that clipboard? No? Fine. Ooh. Ooh. I think I have it set too high now. 
Oh, I feel like such a professional when I have to do this. Okay, I think that should do it. I thought I had to push the button to open the door. Seems like offices in the 60s were just as boring as uh, offices now. Holy mother, this game is loud. I ultimately had to go into the Windows volume mixer and turn this game down to, what was it, 10%? Ha. Agent Archer, how thoughtful of you to join us. I hope we aren't inconveniencing you too awfully with matters of international security. Not at all, Mr. Smith, but it's charming of you to mention it. It is not my ambition to be charming. Well, that's fortunate. I would advise you to watch your tongue. Well... If it isn't the inimitable Agent Lowry. Sorry I'm late, Smithy. You're looking dapper today. Spare me the disingenuous flattery, old boy. It doesn't suit you. I was being sincere. It was the one polite thing I could think to say. You're still upset with me, aren't you? I assure you, I have nothing against you personally. You've served us well for many years, but perhaps too many. I firmly believe it is in Unity's best interests that you retire from field operations and I will continue to campaign to that end until you accept an administrative position. I'm not upset with you, Smithy. I just don't like you. I do understand your concern, but just because you're too old for the field doesn't mean that I am. Until I'm declared unfit for duty, I will continue to prove it. I retired voluntarily. Of course you did. Perhaps we should dispense with the pleasantries and get down to brass tacks. Fine. Lights, please. We lost another agent this afternoon, bringing the total to seven operatives in ten days. It is our firm belief that someone is systematically eliminating our undercover agents, which leads us to believe that the clandestine operations section has been compromised. It seems we have a traitor in our midst. Do you suspect anyone? We suspect everyone. Seven operatives... That's about half the active list. Why weren't we informed sooner? You're being informed now. This situation has unfolded rather abruptly. The assassin left a lily, a regal finale, to be precise, on or near the corpse of each victim. Mean anything to either of you? Volkov. Who? Dmitry Volkov. The regal finale is his calling card. The name's familiar. What do we know about him? He's a right bastard. Anything more specific? Just what's in his file. Born in Kamchatka in 1921. Distinguished himself as an academic prodigy and master chess player by the age of eight, by which time he'd also earned notoriety for refining various torture techniques on neighbors' pets. It seems he joined the NKVD in 37 and served as some sort of disciplinarian in a gulag near Kiev. His whereabouts during the war are unknown, except for a brief mention in 43, when he was spotted by an OSS officer at Leningrad, interrogating prisoners of war who would later disappear without a trace. Ah, yes, I remember this fellow. We've had dealings with him before. Sometime after the war, he emerged again, this time in the employ of Smirsch. He's personally credited with well over a thousand executions, spies and Soviet dissidents for the most part. In 61, a failed assassination attempt left him without an eye. He was shot in the face at close range by one of our finest agents. You flatter me, but I shouldn't have missed. He escaped by throwing himself off a 70-foot cliff into an icy river. It was presumed that he survived, as no body was ever recovered. In fact, rumor has it, he's currently working for an organization calling itself Harm as Director of Executive Action. I don't have to tell you what that means. What do we know about harm? Unfortunately, there's very little about them in our files. Well, despite the obvious risks, we still have a job to do. In this case, a very important one. Wet work. Precisely. And after this recent catastrophe, the two of you are our only available assets. 
To be perfectly frank, Agent Archer, you're only getting this assignment because we've no other choice. Matters of such delicacy aren't really the sort of thing we would usually entrust to a woman. Emotional inconstancy and assassination do not make especially good bedfellows, if you take my meaning. <laughs> yes! Implicitly. But you shouldn't be ashamed. Administration is a perfectly noble career. I don't think I like your tone. I believe what Agent Archer means to say, Smithy, is that she appreciates the chance, however fortuitous, to demonstrate her abilities as an operative, and that she'll endeavor not to disappoint the committee. Isn't that so, Agent Archer? Aye. That's not what it sounded like to me. Enough of this. Time is of the essence. Stop by the toy shop before you go. They have some new gizmos you might find useful. Don't dally too long, though. Your flight leaves at 6 p.m. Where are we going? Morocco. Agent Archer, what does harm stand for? I haven't figured that out yet. See if you can't find out. And be careful, both of you. Oh, they evaporated. Okay, uh, I have gone into the options and found subtitles. I hadn't actually gotten to a point where anybody spoke to me in the story the first time around, so I didn't realize that uh, I hadn't done that yet. My apologies. Looking the mouse doesn't do anything there. Looks good to me. Wait. How come we don't have any of these in, uh, Canada? We've got one on the continent where no one lives, but you, uh... Ah, never mind. I don't know what that thing on the right side of the screen is. I'm not sure how much of a tutorial to expect from this game. runs on Lithtech, which is the same engine which ran one of the first games I ever played, which was called Shogo, Mobile Armor Division. We strongly advise that you go through the training course before embarking on your first mission. There are many nuances and features you may overlook otherwise. If you prefer to skip training, just head to the exit. Oh. here. Oh, well then let's just do this. I have heard that uh, a big part of the humor in this game comes from Kate dealing with, uh... Well, I mean, I'll just say it. It's the 60s, so misogyny. Welcome to Basic Field Tactics. Sup? This course comprises several areas, each with its own lesson. You must complete each lesson in order to proceed. Now step up to the active station designated by the flashing light. Your crosshair will change to indicate an item that can be activated. All right, now open the door to the next area. Oh, it was E. Fuck. Bystanders will often speak to you if you activate them. Sometimes they will share useful information. Sometimes they just want to chat. Be sure to conceal any obvious weapon or they'll be too distressed to talk. Try activating Leon. Hello, Leon. Well done. All right, now open the door to the next area. It's very strange to me that they're not actually telling you how to do any of this. If you want to skip a cutscene, simply press the space bar. Congratulations! You've completed the basic field tactics course. You should now continue to the advanced field tactics area, where you will receive specific instruction for your upcoming mission. 
Note that new simulations will be prepared for you before each mission. No feet in this game. I believe it was uh, Shogo, then this. The, then there was at least one sequel, No One Lives Forever 2. And uh, after that, I want to say the next thing they did was uh, Fear. First Encounter, Assault Recon. Arg. So, do you think the CT-180 will get a decent field rating? I wouldn't get my hopes up if I were you. Have you seen the commission form for that thing? They want everything that the TR-60 and TR-61 can do all in one device. But, hand me that atomic retroscopic analyzer thingy, will you? But they don't understand that Clancy's team was killing themselves just to get the TR-60 up to spec. And that was back when they had twice as many designers with four times the development time. Not only that, but the TR-60 was designed as an infiltration device, and the CT-180 is meant for emergency extractions. So have you heard what Carrington's team is working on? Yeah, an ultra-quiet vacuum cleaner. If that thing's really supposed to be some big secret, why the hell do they keep talking about it in the Unity newsletter? Okay. For the sake of my sanity, I will assume... Can I just... Hmm. All of these doors appear to be locked. I also find it weird that there was only the one flashing light. Well, I might as well save. Uh... I got nothing clever. Colon D. And a quick save is F6, apparently. Is quick load F9? It is! Can't interact with this. Advanced field tactics, yes, okay. That's more like Welcome it. to Advanced Field Tactics. Where are my mission objectives? Well, that's my stats. I hit tab to get that. Keep an eye out for ammunition boxes. Each can contain various ammunition types. Once the box is empty, it will disappear. You won't have the opportunity to heal while on a mission, so you'll need to rely on body armor to protect yourself from damage. Damn. Be warned that certain types of damage will ignore armor completely, though, such as that sustained from falling or running out of oxygen. All right, now open the door to the next area. While on a mission, Always keep an eye out for miscellaneous intelligence items that might be of benefit to us. Here are some of the items you should look for. The more you recover, the better your mission rating will be. Pick up these intelligence items to proceed. Okay, so we got blueprints. Oh, they're just going to tell me. Fine, blueprint. A dossier. A briefcase. A letter containing classified information. An envelope. A roll of 35 millimeter film. Can I rotate that or anything? No. Some loose files. All right, now open the door to the next area. And a reel-to-reel -reel tape. You may occasionally be called upon to arm or disarm explosive devices. Simply activate the device to enable or disable it as necessary. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this since I'm still in the middle of the tutorial, but there goes my timer. Oh dear. Uh, I'm burning dog face. 
and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play No One Lives Forever when we, uh, keep learning how to be a spy. Later! <laughs>